300 millimeter lens I bought is like looking through a six powered scope. What that means is if you want a full frame image of a duck, you got to be less than 15 feet from it. Well, for the next year, I experimented building blinds and I built them out of conduit and PVC and sticks and burlap and chicken wire and you name it, I tried it. And finally, I came up with a blind that uh, didn't seem to spook the wood ducks too bad. Uh, I was uh, setting up on some private property up north off the trace and I went in and I found a place that I thought they would that I liked, I liked the way it looked and I could get to it, it wasn't too deep and I could sit down in a chair and it wouldn't go over my waders. And uh, you know, I, I put that blind out and ducks would swim by it early in the morning and land close to it, but you gotta have daylight to, to photograph. And uh, about the time the uh, sun got high enough to photograph, the ducks all swam off 50 or 60 yards and congregated in a little pocket and they stayed there all day. Well, at 50 or 60 yards, the wood duck looked like a speck on a 35 millimeter slide. Finally, I wised up and figured, you know, there's something over there those ducks like. So I moved my blind over there. And I camouflaged it up, and I left it a couple of weeks and came back, and lo and behold, not only did I have ducks land all around me, I had one land on top of the blind. That day, I took 10 rolls of film, everything I had and I took more images of wood ducks that one day than I had the whole year before put together. So that's what got me going with it. And uh, from there, uh, you know, these other birds would land around. And uh, after I'd been published a hundred times or so, and most of them were wood ducks and a few mallards, I said, you know, these magazines have got these other birds in it. Why not photograph them too? And uh, of course, I started photographing cranes, and that's what everybody calls them, but when you go get a birder's book, it's a great blue heron. And uh, I ended up with probably six bird ID books upstairs and started fooling with photographing little blue herons and great egrets and snipe and uh, ibis and anything else that would come close to me. Uh, I developed my blind out on Ross Barnett and then figured out that you know, there's places I can't get to walking because the water's too deep or a creek or it's just too far to be carrying all this gear over your shoulder uh, in the pitch dark. And I started working out of a, a boat that's kind of like a canoe and kind of like a, uh, kind of like a canoe cross with a, uh, a kayak and they call it a poke boat. And I got to camouflaging up in it and paddling out where I wanted to go and playing a waiting game and that worked pretty good. Uh, from there, you know, the ducks start leaving in March and April, but as they, as the ducks left, all these other birds started flying in and uh, they'd walk on the lily pads and they'd weave a nest in the cattails and um, I figured, well, why not photograph them? And all of a sudden it dawned on me I didn't have to have all the camouflage on if I stayed where the fishermen were. Because the birds were used to seeing the fishermen fish and hearing them talk and beating around and movement. And uh, one of my best uh, tools was a good pair of binoculars. And I'd uh, find my subject and I'd try to ease up to it. And didn't always do it, but they were a little bit more approachable uh, that way if I stayed around where the fishermen were than they were in the back in the back of the swamp um, and I started photographing purple gallinules and moorhens and least bitterns and uh, uh, night herons and that type of stuff and of course when you're playing in the swamp you end up with uh, neutral rats and frogs and turtles and snakes and alligators and um, occasional raccoon. Back in 1993 my mama in Oxford, Mississippi, asked me if I'd come do a slideshow to the Oxford, Mississippi Garden Club. And I said, of course I would, Mama. And they had it at the Mary Bowie Museum, which was on the campus of the University of Mississippi. Well, the week after that, the curator of the museum who was there called me and said she'd be interested in me doing a uh, gallery show if I'd be interested in putting one on. Well, heck yeah, let's do it. Well, it was going to be a couple of years, and so I had some time to work on some more images. 
and uh, I put it together and uh, I got to thinking, well, if I've got this gallery showing, I might as well see where else I can, I can let it hang. So I do 10 or 12, 13 of these shows every year uh, and I found it's the best way to promote my photography because people can actually see it and feel it rather than looking at it on a magazine page or an ad and they, they can see the print and see this is what I'll get once I buy it and get it matted and framed and this is how it'll look.